Time and time again, Windows users have encountered the elusive blue screen of death. When a Windows computer crashes, it outputs a blue screen indicating a stop error, further information, as well as a Unix hexadecimal timestamp, which gives an approximate time of the crash. Most people who encounter blue screen of death errors uh, don't really look into it much further and just kind of pray that it doesn't happen again. Uh, we've seen blue screens on 42nd Street in New York. We've seen blue screens at subway terminals. We've seen them on the giant uh, digital billboards. But really, how many of these, we wonder, are being debugged? And so I'm going to show you some tools that are used to debug uh, memory dumps. And actually, when the blue screen happens, where does that memory dump file go? go. Many people think, okay, the computer crashed, it just gave me this blue screen, and I really don't know what else is happening. First, I'll tell you that most blue screens occur due to some sort of driver conflict. And secondly, not all blue screens do occur due to <laughs> a driver conflict. So in that instance, it's important that we understand how blue screen debugging works, that there are tools that have been uh, made available by Microsoft to take a look at the blue screen to share the memory dump out on forums like Windows 7 forums where we have a huge number of U uh, blue screen of death specialists. We have uh, Torrent G who is probably the most prolific one of them all that we've seen. Occasionally we have a Microsoft MVP pop in and check out things. Uh, we've got quite a few who do look at these blue screens and can give you an idea of exactly what's going on here. So let's go ahead and I'll show you where you can get the uh, crash dump uh, utility and exactly what it does. Okay, so what happens after a Windows computer blue screens is that it actually exports a memory dump here where where the memory dump goes it's a file that contains it's a binary file so you can't just open it in any reader and it's a file that contains information pertinent to your crash and where you find it is right here C Windows mini dump okay mini dump and I'll just zoom in on that for you so you can see it C Windows mini dump and I actually have a mini dump from the 9th that I didn't really know about, which is interesting to me. This is a dump file from a blue screen that did take place, probably because I had plugged too many uh, <laughs> devices into my computer at the same time or something. But this is great because now we'll be able to use the utility uh, to analyze this crash dump. What we could do if we wanted to send this over to Windows 7 forums, and we have a huge, as I said before, number of people that look at these um, that know a lot more about it than I do. I'm seven times certified in information technology, and I don't bother with crash dumps myself. When I start seeing blue screens, I start thinking, oh man, uh, there's something wrong with the drivers. I tried to do a process of elimination technique, but if you can actually read the dump files, uh, you may be able to bypass that whole process that I do. So what you want to look at is, check this out. Um, this is the dump file. We know that it's in C Windows Mini Dump, right? Uh, you would add it to an archive. If you have WinRAR or WinZip, you just add it to an archive. If you don't, you can still compress it using the, the uh, built-in Windows uh, compression uh, utility that is built into Windows. You compress the file, or if it's that small, uh, we will actually make it on Windows 7 forums where you can update dump files raw. You don't have to compress them. Um, and then what you need to do to actually look at them, this is something most people won't do, but you can go to windbg.org, and this is a site that's sort of a proxy site that goes to Microsoft anyway, but it's sponsored by Memory Dump Analysis Services. I'm not really sure who these people are. Uh, don't really think it matters at this point. But you just click. Uh, if you have 32-bit windows, you click on the 32-bit one. If you have 64-bit, you click on the 64-bit one. And this will launch you into the debugging tools for Windows 64-bit versions. Uh, this will work on XP, on uh, Windows Vista and Windows 7 and you want to download the debugging tools from the Windows SDK so what I'll show you next is first how to upload a dump file uh, to Windows 7 forums if you wanted to but and then I'll show you how to actually use the dump uh, debugging tools if you want to take a look and I'll show you how uh, dates are done with hexadecimal, Unix hexadecimals and what the stop code means and so on and so forth. So we'll get to that very shortly. 
Alright, so we're back now, and I've got my mini dump file here ready for upload. And I'm going to go to Windows 7 Support. And I'm going to post a new thread. I'll just zoom in here. Let's see. So, unexpected. BSOD results in crash dump. I'll write out, of course we have some similar threads that just pop up. Hello everyone. I have recently had a crash dump file appear in C Windows mini dump. I am uploading it here for those who may wish to review it. However, I cannot specify what the cause of this problem may have been. And we'll just put a smiley face. Now, for attachments we go to manage attachments and we have a whole bunch of attachments that I have over the ages here uh, put in here. What I'm going to do is go to add an attachment. I'm going to definitely go to C, go down Windows, Mini Dump, and I'll choose that dump file there. Go to upload the file. It's actually not that big in comparison. And let's try to take this and insert it in line, even though we know that doesn't really work too well for these types of files. Um, just double space it down here. And tag it. and submit new thread. Alright, so now the mini dump file can be downloaded by pretty much anyone. This file, this uh, post can be searched on and it can be opened. But we need now to get the debugging utility. What will happen now is people that are searching for uh, blue screens of death, they will in fact find, be able to search on this and find it and so on and so forth. It appears at the top of the list. So now what we want to do is um, go here and we're going to download the debugging tools from the Windows SDK site. Okay. And we go to download. So the download link was right in front of my nose. What I want to do is double click here because I'm in Firefox and go to run. Obviously it's published by Microsoft here. Click on run. Ah, here we are. So the software development kit. I'll agree. And we have a lot of different things we can do here that we want to go with uh, the basics here. As a matter of fact, we have a performance toolkit. We have a lot of stuff where if you're really interested in this stuff, um, you can go ahead. But I'm going to actually get rid of the coding because I'm not doing playing on doing any development. I'm going to get rid of the .NET development stuff. Um, and I'm probably going to keep the common utilities. And we're now in the process of downloading. I'll go ahead and come back when it finishes. All right, so we finished downloading, and now we have debugging tools for Windows 64. And we go to WinDBG. Okay, let me zoom out here actually. Let's see, we got a big mass of stuff going on. What I want to do is uh, open up our crash dump. So we see open crash dump or control D. We go to C, go back all the way down. Windows. Mini dump. And we'll open up the dump file. 
Save information from workspace? No. All right, here we go. And let's see what kind of information we're picking off here. Uh, this one is giving us very little information for some reason, and I'm not really sure why. But the good thing is, um, let's say, you know, on every blue screen, we can get a timestamp off that blue screen. And a timestamp gives you the exact date and time that the crash happened. And if you don't know what date and time the crash happened, you can go ahead and there's a timestamp converter that will actually help you with that. Uh, that's located over at fmdiff.com uh, so forward slash fm forward slash timestamp dot html. Okay, and remember that the timestamp in Windows blue screens is a hexadecimal Unix hexadecimal timestamp. So if I put that in here, I'm going to pull up a date of Thursday, uh, August 29th, 2002, 10, uh, 10, 10 hundred hours, I guess that is, uh, 10.08, 28 seconds. So you have some time there, and you can find all this information usually from the mini dump if it's not post it in there you'll get the hexadecimal version but apparently my mini dump contains so little information that it's almost useless but that's probably why it's also so small the crash dump that uh, was dumped was did not contain much information but I am not the expert on this but the team blue screen of death at Windows 7 forums most certainly is and they're in the best position possible to help you. If you go to groups on Windows 7 forums and if you go down to Team BSOD, I'm a member of that team and there are quite a few others. Uh, Torrent G is one of the best. Trouble Randy is most certainly one of the best. We've got a Microsoft MVP named JC Griff too who's definitely good. He knows his stuff. Cybercore of course. Jonathan King Icky May, Zvit, Josepher, and Mitchell A. And Josepher is actually uh, Joseph Stackhouse, who did some of our other videos. But there you go. I hope this gives you a great information about how you can upload crash dumps, how you can take a look at them if you even want to, and exactly what the Windows Development Kit SDK is. Uh, and how that all works. So there you go. That's my post on mini dumps, crashes, and BSODs. Don't leave them hanging. Don't let them stay around. You want to find out what the cause is, especially if they keep happening. Usually it's a problem that could be pretty severe. And you want to take a look and make sure that that's you know, something that you deal with rather than ignore, especially if this is happening uh, with business stuff. If you have a lot of business files on your system, you certainly don't want to leave your uh, computer open to this type of threat and this type of problem. You want to solve the problem at its root. You know, you can look at the problem all you want and say, oh, it's this, it's that. But until you identify the cause, only then can you stop the problem at the root. And that's the basis for this video. So visit us over at Windows7Forums.com. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Take care and have a great night, everyone.